Hello everybody. Last video I used a press to shape some steel, and I figured I'd go more into depth on that. To be crass, I have barely any idea of what I was doing when I made this. It was just an experiment to see if it would solve the shaping problem. So don't take this as any kind of tutorial. The original form was designed for 1.2mm flat sheet, which turned out pretty good. You need to take the thickness into account so you don't pinch the material when you press down. The operation is pretty simple. Assemble the press, insert the sheet, being careful with the alignment, then press down to the required depth. If you press too hard, you will scar the sheet. If you press too soft, you won't fully shape it. One flaw in this design is that it doesn't fully press down the stick out, so I had to adjust that angle on every press with the mallet. This could relatively easily be fixed, but it was easier to just hammer it down. The press itself consists of just a few pieces. You have the bottom die where the sheet will get pushed into, you have the top bar which just spreads the pressure onto the shaping die, and then you have the shaping die itself, which is a 3D printed plastic piece. Having this replaceable made it easier to get that perfect shape to match the car. Here's a close up of how the die is constructed. It could be made a hundred other ways, a lot of them with a lot simpler tools. This is how I made mine, because the process was fun. I squared both of the steel chunks up in the mill to make sure they were perfectly rectangular. Then I milled out the channel or pocket in the middle, drilled two holes for the vertical guide bars on both chunks. I achieved a slight fit on both parts, but I want the chunk with the channel to hold on to the bars. To solve this, I inserted bars and used a steel punch around the entry hole. This makes the steel expand out from where it hit, effectively making the hole smaller, locking the bars in place. The shaping die can then be inserted onto the guide rods to make sure it's perfectly centered when you press. And on top of the shaping die, I put the second chunk of steel. This is to spread the load from the hydraulic ram and support the much weaker plastic shaping die. And that's a finished press tool, ready to use with 1.2mm sheet metal. In this configuration for a very specific shape, so maybe not universally useful, but the general idea can be used for a lot of shapes. To give a bit of a demonstration, I took some random scrap, which happens to be 3mm checker plate aluminium. I didn't have any 1.2mm cutoffs to demonstrate with, so this will have to do. Keep in mind that the shapes will differ from the thinner steel due to the thickness difference. Either way, in with the shaker plate, on with the die and support bar. Now it's just a matter of using the right spacers to give it a press so I don't have to spend all day pumping the piston down. You can kind of feel when you're done, since the resistance rapidly increases when you bottom out the shaping die. At this point it should be fully formed and you need to stop to avoid damage. Taking the press apart again, you can clearly see how the plastic die has been pushed down into the shaker plate to transfer its shape, which gets even clearer when you remove the plastic die. There is some minor damage to the shaker pattern, which could be reduced with some optimization of both the plastic die and steel chunks. Either way, the flat sheet now has a little channel going across, which structurally would give it a lot more strength, and visually might be more appealing in the right situation. For the fun of it, I'm pressing it from the other side now to make the shaker pattern extend, so to say. If you look carefully, you can see that my guide rods are not enough to keep this straight when I apply too much pressure, causing the top part to twist. The forces involved here are a lot higher than you might first imagine, which make things that seem super solid in your hands act as rubber. There was no permanent damage, besides pinching the aluminium a tiny bit. The plastic die did bottom out properly, but the thick aluminium gets a lot less defined than the thinner steel I started the video with. To demo a bit more, I printed a much smaller die. This should give the sheet more of a V-shape, since the contact points are now the outer edges of the steel chunk and the small radius of the shaping die. Same procedure as before, press down until you think it's bottomed out. Adjust the stick out, and release the pressure. This gives a much gentler shape due to the limited depth of the press tool. It's not very parallel to the previous shape since I did a poor job aligning it. Testing implementing more of a shape on the lower part to force a tight curve into the checker plate. I shipped out on the infill on the lower part, so I suspect this will be a one-shot die. The upper die is the same as the last time. I have designed these dies to have a gap of roughly the thickness of the checker plate, so the plate can actually follow the curve, so to say. Adjusting the stick out, and releasing the pressure. There is some damage on the lower die, but actually less than I expected. What I can see is some limited layer or line shearing, so I suspect a hotter print with slightly higher extrusion temperature would make it hold up better. Using these dies, it results in a lot more defined V-shape with a slight radius. 
Basically, when doing things like this, your imagination is the limit. I hope the video was interesting and thank you for watching. Please leave a comment if you liked it. I love to hear from people watching my videos and try to respond as much as possible. Bye.